Hello everyone and welcome back to In The Kitchen With Pen or perhaps I should more correctly describe it today as Pen's Wartime Kitchen. Mm. Well it does look a bit like a bomb drop but the wartime bit is because we're going to both be having meals that would have been commonplace during the war, the whole recipe. And we are starting with something I have never ever cooked nor eaten. It was one of the few things when I was a kid my mum would let me get away without eating and that is hot. Okay, now I'll eat liver, I'll eat kidney. I just, I just can't, but heart is something that Steve used to have as a kid and he enjoyed it. So today I'm going to be cooking it. It won't be like his mum's. I'm not naive enough to think it's going to be like his mum's because I doubt she'd have used this recipe. But hopefully the texture will be similar and fingers crossed he likes it. So come on down and see the ingredients. Oh actually no, before we do that, I'm using recipes from this wartime recipe booklet. Okay, so, right, now you can come on down and have a look at the ingredients. Ingredients are quite simply the heart. And in my bowl, I have just over a tablespoon of dried homemade breadcrumbs, a teaspoon of suet, some salt, some pepper and some chopped parsley. I use curly parsley because, let's get real, that's what they would have used during the war. Flat, flat leaf parsley is kind of a new herb, although it's years old now. But Okay, so I've got that in there. I just add, need to add a little milk to bring it together to make a... Well, we're stuffing really. Now this is supposed to stuff both hearts and well they're not very big so it probably will. Right, so that's softened that up. Yeah, can you see? Okay, now we move on to the offal. That sounds better. I can't keep saying that word. Right, Steve's doing this bit because I just can't bring myself to do it. He's cutting. This is fresh. Yeah, of course it's fresh. It's oh. still pumping your cheek. Oh, things to have to put up with. He's cutting out the dividing walls so that we've got somewhere to stuff. I feel like my heart surgeon. I hope he's a bit more delicate. Yeah. He's rough as arseholes, wasn't he? Yeah. He wanted to show me he was boss. Well, I don't know if this is right. I mean, it just says cut out the dividing walls, so... I'm not sure the, I'm not sure the council would appreciate it. Okay. We'll come back when they're done. Steve has done that for me and as you can see, we've now got somewhere to actually place our stuffing. So, I need to get on with that. I mean, there doesn't seem a lot of stuffing here for two hearts, but I'm just going to get some of it and just push it in but having said there's not a lot there's not a lot of room in there either that is full so and there we go they're both done right there you go I'll clear up and we'll get on with the next step There you 
go, they've both got a toothpick and we're just going to let those colour all over. That's kind of the colour we want so we're just going to keep turning until we're a nice colour all over. These are all coloured on one side, on all sides, so what I've done is I've turned the heat down and I'm going to put on a lid and they're going to cook like that for about an hour and I'm going to keep coming and turning them making sure they don't burn. You might also see that I've got something else on the stove and that is for my pudding which is a part of my pudding, my dinner which is a part finder pudding it's called and in there I have some <coughs> diced parsnips that I am just cooking. I just mentioned my pudding and or my dinner and it's a pathfinder pudding and what's in a pathfinder pudding? Well I had no idea but come on down and take a look. Right then I've already told you that I've got some parsnips on cooking. The other ingredients are leek cheese and some mustard. Now this pudding is to feed six to eight people and um, it would have just four ounces of cheese. So that's half an ounce of cheese per person if you were feeding eight. So I'm gonna go with about half an ounce of cheese in my pudding. Now the Suet pastry is slightly different because usually a suet pastry is half suet to flour. Well, we would have six ounces of flour, a little bit of salt, some baking powder, and just one ounce, just one ounce of suet. But to bulk out that pastry, you would grate in a potato. So that's what I have done and I've got everything mixed and I just now need to add some water to bind. Now the pudding is just for me so I have just my one little dinky pudding bowl. So let's get some water and carry on. I'm going to use the end of a spoon and I'm just going to add in some water and mix until we've got something that has come together and hopefully resembles a pastry and what do you know look at that we've got a pastry dough so I need to grease this roll this out and sort out my pudding dish well will you look at me being an umpty it wasn't mustard it was mustard but it was mustard powder now it's one teaspoon for the full recipe so I'm just going to use just about a quarter teaspoon now it wasn't on ration so I don't have to be too particular but as I say the cheese was so we are going to measure our cheese there you are, that's our weighed cheese and as you can see I couldn't get one ounce, I've got 1.1 ounce so somebody's going to be a bit short of cheese this week aren't they? Well as you can see, now it's grated and I've finally grated it, that cheese looks like there's a lot of it so I'm just going to add some salt and some pepper into this not too much salt because this cheese is salty and we're going to go in with black pepper I don't know whether that's what they'd have used but. and then we're just going to mix this all together um, <clears throat> if I have a concern I'm thinking will this be quite dry inside? I don't know time will tell. So moving that to one side it's time to roll out our pastry. As you can see I have floured the board and I'm just making sure 
the, the whole of the pastry gets covered with the flour and now I'm going to roll it out. To be fair I've probably got too much pastry here but thank goodness we're not on rations then. So I need to roll it big enough so that it fills my pudding basin and I'm pretty sure that will do it. So lift up your pastry, oh no, let's do it again. So I didn't have enough flour there. Right, we're looking big enough. I have greased the um, basin, which, as I say, you would have used something that wasn't rationed. So any fat left over from any meat that you may have got, you wouldn't have been able to use your butter, well you would have, but I doubt many people would have used their butter or their margarine ration just to line a pudding dish. Our basin is lined. I'm just going to cut away any excess and then we're going to add our filling. And yeah, I've got too much filling here. Maybe I will have to make two puddings. Could I eat two puddings now? I'm not sure. So I'm going to pack this one really well. So we've got the cheese, the mustard, the leeks, the um, parsnips. Right. That smells really nice. But realistically, what's not to like? Cheese, parsnip, leeks. Okay, that's our dish, or our pudding basin, pretty full. Right, pudding basin full <laughs> lid. Well, the pastry for the lid rolled out so I'm just going to use a bit of water just around the top of the pastry that's lining the basin then we're going to go on with our pudding lid and just seal it and the <coughs> water will protect that seal well, in the um, spirit of waste not, want more, want not during the war, I had some pastry in the fridge, which they wouldn't have done, but I've just made a small pie with the remaining filling. So, I'll have two types to try. Our hearts have had about 40 minutes now, so what I'm doing is I'm taking them out I am going to strain off most of this fat and then we're going to be making a gravy and allowing our hearts to braise. We've upped the temperature and we're going to sprinkle over a spoonful of flour. And this will make a roux. Okay, what we want to do is to mix the flour in with the fat and we need to let it cook for a little while. So once this is cooked, we'll be back. That's had a minute or so, so I'm just going to add in gradually some water to make a braising gravy. Yes, it looks lumpy, don't worry about that. By the time we're finished, it won't be. We just keep adding water and stirring. And now 
now we're going to go in with just a couple of drops of gravy browning because obviously this looks a bit, well, anemic, doesn't it? There you go, a couple of drops of gravy browning and we are done. So, the heart is going back in. The lid will go on and we will braise those for, just going to add anything that came out there, we're going to braise those for a couple of hours. So next time you see this, it will be on a plate. Now naturally back in the 40s they didn't have microwaves in which to steam their puddings. Not that they could have steamed it in a metal dish anyway. So it would be steamed in a saucepan of water. And I'm just going to cover my pie pudding with a piece of greaseproof grease paper in which I put a pleat. Now the pleat is to allow the the greaseproof, the pie crust, pudding crust, to expand during cooking. Okay, and then I've done the same with a piece of foil and I'm going the opposite way with foil. Again, they would have used string. I've got these lovely fans that work if you're trussing a chicken as well. So, there is my pudding ready to cook. That will go into a saucepan of warm water and cook for about an hour. Right then, it's cooked, so I'm assuming you'd like to have a little look at it. I'm quite impressed. It smells nice. There we go. Wartime recipe number one, braised hearts. Now, I've only done carrots and mashed potato because, let's be honest, they wouldn't have gone overboard with the veg because they had to be careful. So. I'm going to take this through to Steve, and do you know what? I think I might actually get him to do a review on it, so hold tight. Then time for mine, and as you can see, I hope, the pudding has risen, so hence the plat, plat pleat in the foil and the um, greaseproof. Okay. I have made some gravy really. There we go. There it is. I'm just going to dish it up. Oh, that came out really well. There we go. Our Pathfinder pudding. But I'm going to cut it open and bring you down and show you it. Here we go. Would I have liked some gravy with it? Yeah. Whose fault that there's no gravy? Mine. So we'll see what Steve thinks and we'll return. Right. Here is the result of the um, jury from the United Kingdom. Not for me. <laughs> I am so disappointed. I, this is something I used to have as a kid, but it's a texture thing. It's so soft and chewy. And now I can't stop thinking about what it is. I love liver. I generally do love liver it's got a strong taste to it, it tastes a little bit like leather uh, leather <laughs> um but no it's not for me so i do appreciate pen's efforts she cooked it for the first time it's what we would have eaten in the, as kids it's what our parents would have eaten during the war but my Tastes have changed so much that um, nah, it's not for me. So I'm going to eat my potato. I'm going to drink my gravy. 
might even eat the carrots. But for me, not for me. But I certainly would encourage you to give it a go. It wasn't expensive, but it's taken two hours to cook. That's where the money's gone. So I'm afraid not, but thank you for watching me uh, try it. But I won't be trying it again. Keep cooking. Okay, it is kind of the verdict I was expecting and that's basically the main reason I just couldn't bring myself to eat the um, heart either. I'm going to get on with my Pathfinder pudding, which I'm enjoying. I'm not even sure that Steve would like that because it's parsnips and in a pastry and he's like mm. anyway thank you for watching this edition of in the kitchen with pen i know it's been a long one but hopefully it's been quite informative and we'll see you again very soon bye bye if you like what we're doing don't forget to give us a like if you'd like to subscribe Click on our picture here. If you want to see more videos of what we get up to, click here. Thanks for watching. Bye.